Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi, uh, welcome. Uh, in this session, uh, we will discuss how stock prices are determined. So, in the previous session, one of the previous session, we have defined equity market where claims on the net income, the holder of uh, equities has the claims on the net income and assets of the business. So, there we also discussed that there are two markets. One is primary markets where new issue of a security or new issue of a share happens. And then about the secondary markets where transaction of an already issued security happens where brokers and dealers are there. And in today's session, we will focus in the secondary market that is called the stock markets and there how stock prices are determined and what are the other factors. Uh, for example, the interest rate which we discussed in the pre one of the pre in the previous sessions, and some monetary policy. How does uh, uh, how does it affect uh, the stock prices? So, in this slide, I have taken some screenshots of some leading stock exchanges. So, where you can see the first one, Dow Jones Industrial Average. So, you can see this is the index. This actually computed by looking at the stock prices of 30 large companies listed on stock exchange in the US. So you can see the S&P 500, this also developed using the stock performance of 500 large companies listed on stock exchanges in the US. So NASDAQ also you can see uh, is a composite index, it actually include over the stock prices of 2500 uh, companies listed in the NASDAQ. So this actually built, you can see that it has been built based on the stock prices and the index it has been built and over time it has been followed. So when it comes to Indian context, I think you are familiar that we have two major stock exchanges. Uh, one is S&P that is Bombay Stock Exchange. Uh, you can see this is uh, the stock, this is the index. Um, here Nifty also is given. Uh, in the case of BSC, uh, S&P BSC, you can see that is a free floating float market weighted stock market index of 30 well established and financially sound companies. And there are different types of indices, for example, uh, top 100 companies, um, uh, this is another index. So which, whichever you want accordingly, you can follow. Similarly, you can see Nifty 50 index is based on the 50 top performing company listed companies this index has been built. So I am also giving the screenshot of major stock exchanges in the world starting from New York uh, stock exchange, NASDAQ, etc. This is just for your information. So what is happening in the stock exchange, I am sure you are familiar that means the transaction of already existing uh, stocks. Then the question comes, uh, how do we calculate the price of a common stock? Uh, so, what we can observe that in the market, uh, already we observe what is the current price of a stock, but for our analysis purpose, how do we given certain information, certain information about a, a company stock or company, then how do we calculate the price of a stock? Before doing that, let us make a quick review of bond pricing. So here, what is the price, for example, let us start with the basic which we have done in one of the previous class. What is the price of a one year 8 percentage coupon bond? For this, you know that we need the following information, what is the face value, what is the coupon rate and what is the interest rate. So suppose the interest rate is 5 percentage, suppose we have this information, face value we have coupon, that both we already know and the interest rate is for example 5 percentage. Then using this formula which we have used in the previous class, we know that the price of this bond with a face value given the coupon rate of 4 and 5 percentage we are going to get the current uh, bond price is going to be 51.43. So we will then let us think about the stock price. So what is your willingness to pay for a stock with the following features? 
that means instead of coupon let us put that the expected dividend the stock is going to give you in the next year is going to be four dollar and expected price next year is going to be the price of stock in the next year is going to be uh, 50 dollar so in this scenario what's your willingness to pay for a stock with the following these features so it's not that easy easy to calculate because you know both look like similar but one big difference the big difference is that next year dividend for example the next year dividend which i said here is dollar four and next year price both are in fact expectations the realized price might be different right so buying the stock involves some risk in this scenario we think that uh, computing the price of common stock we need to uh, look into some values that actually what is going to be the next year dividend the expectation we need to compute what is going to be the next year price plus we also need to see what is the discount factor for example in the case of bond we have interest rate but here in the case of stocks we don't have any interest rate so we need to find out some value that can be used as a discount so in order to compute the price of common stock one of the widely used method is the one period valuation model it shows that the price of stock at present current that means p naught means current uh, the current stock price is going to be a uh, dividend that you are going to get in the next year plus the price of stocks in the next year uh, discounted by 1 plus ke so what is this ke so let us uh, point out that the p naught that i already mentioned uh, current price of the stock the present discounted value of the expected cash flow uh, this is the that is the current price of the stock the present discounted value of the expected cash flows and d1 dividend paid at the end of next year ke the required return on investment in equity this is actually determined by so many other factors what is your return on alternative investment for example investment in a bond suppose you are getting uh, 10 percentage as the interest income 10 percentage interest from uh, investing in a bond that actually going to influence your ke aspect required return on investment in this equity obviously you need to get more than that right because this involved investment in uh, equity involves some more risk than as compared to the investment in a bond so this is the required return on uh, investment in equity so the expected return on shareholders equity is equal to risk free interest rate for example 10 percentage which i mentioned here just now plus you need some risk premium the for example because you are going investing uh, in stocks uh, there are volatility and un uncertainties there you don't know what is going to happen after one year when in, after in the future maybe the company may collapse so all the possibilities are there so in order to incentivize you you need a risk premium maybe for example you need five percentage as a risk premium so that is how this value of this ke is determined so we can, in this case ke we can also say that this is a kind of uh, discount rate in this context this is going to be a discount rate also we can say so p1 which we already mentioned the expected sale price of the stock at the end of the first period then now let's see illustrate using an example what is the price of a stock so using this one period valuation model suppose you have been given this information that means the expected dividend next year is going to be uh, four dollar and expected price next year is going to be uh, 50 dollar and assume that just for the sake of simplicity let us assume that your ke is going to be 10 percentage maybe we can build it like that eight percentage is the current interest rate and two percentage is the risk premium so let us make it assume ke is going to be 10 percentage so plugging these values in the formula that we got here uh, we can calculate the price of this stock so we are going to get with the given these features that is the dividend and d1 and p1 with uh, the ke of 10 percentage that is 0 0.110 10 percentage uh, then plugging this value we can see that 
the price of this stock in this market given for an individual who is willing to pay who is having this k expected value the required return on investment in equity given these informations is going to be 49.09 this is one period valuation model but you know that stocks is not just for a one year investment so this is till its lifetime is a long term investment that means that you are getting the share of a company right as long as the company uh, exists uh, you are the shareholder of that company as long as you are not selling suppose you are in case you are not selling this share at all so that means your ownership in that company is for a long term so actually infinite time period so your current stock price it should reflect not only this next year dividend and stock price expected price but actually for the infinite uh, forecasting horizon we need to include so in this case what how you we are going to develop this formula expand this formula this formula has two components now the first component uh, is the present value of future cash flow from dividend that means dividend in year 1 year 2 uh, plus plus you can see dividend for nth number of years so here we need to discount it with the value of ke uh, this one so same that the ke uh, that is the present value of all future cash flow from the dividend plus we also need to calculate uh, the present value of future uh, present value of the price of stock in nth year so the this is the formula that we are going to get but one of the issue here is that if pn is far in the future obviously it is going to be far in the future because we already say that um, the share means is a, a long term in, in investment in the share of the company that means um, not just for 1 or 2 3 years so so is n number of years so in this case we are going to see that when the pn is far in the future, future uh, it won't affect p not at all how come so let us see this for example the present value of a share of stock that sells for example for 50 75 years from now for example let us take it for sake of simplicity we are just taking 75 years is the uh, time period for the stock actually should be more than that so suppose assume that this is 75 years so a stock that is selling today with 50 75 years from now using a 12 percentage discount rate that the ke so in this case what you can see that if you calculate here if plug value here uh, you are going to get the present value of this stock is going to be 0 dollar 0.01 that means is less than 1 cent right 1 cent only suppose if you increase it to 100 that the year this one we when you go to increase it to 100 200 uh, 500 year something like that if you are going to do then obviously you know that this value is going to be 0.0.0000 right something like that is going to be like that if you increase the number the time by horizon the forecasting horizon if you increase so from this what we can see that in the calculation of the current price of stock the current price of the value of the stock today is going to be going to exclude this part is going to include mainly the first component that is the dividend stream that is going to uh, the cash flow present value of the cash flow from the dividend alone so accordingly it implies that the current value of a share of stock can be calculated as simply the present value of the future dividend stream alone so accordingly we can redefine this formula in this way that is the t that means infinite time time period only looking at the dividend aspects only the dividend from the stocks so to summarize this point the price of the stock is determined only by the present value of future dividend stream okay so we agreed that this is going to be the formula for computing the stock price only looking at the Uh, future dividend stream again we are getting here the n number of year the infinite time period that we are getting here this also practically difficult maybe we can forecast the dividend for year 1 2 3 4 maybe but beyond that it's practically difficult to know what is going to be the dividend a company is going to give in the third year fourth year fifth year like that
right it's practically difficult because we can only see when we see that what is the actual dividend or that the company is giving and in order to address this you know that most companies because they also don't want to suppose the company is doing well uh, suppose the next year the company is doing well and what they do that actually they are learning lots of profit and they are having lots of they can distribute lots of dividend but sometime the company may do bad in the year after next uh, so in that case if they see that there is going to be some fluctuation uh, in their business so normally what companies do that they don't distribute all their profits uh, in the form of dividend some dividend they keep it as uh, undistributed profit that will be used for the um, for uh, financing the operating cost of the company that that's as if uh, that will contribute to the internal finance of the company and also to uh, compensate if there is a uh, decline in profit in the future in order to compensate the dividend in order to ensure that the shareholders get a fixed uh, amount or a certain proper certain amount of dividend most companies they do that they uh, normalize their dividend distribution in order to compensate if there is some up a uh, down in their profit so in that case we can uh, forecast that companies we uh, assume that companies sometime follow a uh, try to give a constant amount of constant uh, the dividend at a constant rate so we can see that by using this one that means a constant dividends suppose company is going to give to, uh, 3 percentage this year next year also they try to stick to 3 percentage 3 percentage 3 percentage next year year to after like that if the company is really doing well then obviously you can say they are going to increase to 4 percentage but they'll try to stick to that amount but they do they won't try to give uh, in one year they are going to give 4 percentage and another year 20 percentage and next year again 3 percentage that not not a good business model so looking at this idea that the practical aspect that means most companies they try to give a constant dividend at a constant rate one more model that is recommended for calculating the stock price is the golden growth model so this is a generalized dividend valuation model that requires that we compute uh, the present value of an infinite stream of dividend a process that could be difficult thus a simplified model have been developed to uh, make calculation easier so this assume the simple model that is golden growth model it assume a constant dividend growth so as i already mentioned many firms try to increase their dividends at a constant rate each year so accordingly uh, we can see that this is the growth rate dividend growth rate uh, we can see here that so this is the formula accordingly if you state this one uh, this is the dividend that the company given in the most recently maybe you can say that today or yesterday or tomorrow yesterday or today that means most recent dividend uh, g is the expected constant growth rate in dividend ke is the which we already discussed the required return on an investment and in equity accordingly the golden growth formula uh, is like this that means price of stock the present price the price of stock is going to be d naught times 1 plus g divided by ke minus g so the g is the growth rate the expected uh, constant growth rate in dividends so uh, rewriting this formula we can get a very simplified formula uh, that the current price of the stock is going to be d1 that is the stock price dividend paid at the end of year one dividend to be paid at the end of year one uh, divided by ke minus g so these are the explanation for that so this is the formal derivation for this formula and then to get uh, how we are getting p naught is equal to uh, d1 by ke minus g so now let's see uh, based on this golden formula how the market sets uh, stock prices uh, how do we apply this golden formula in understanding how market sets stock prices uh, importantly the stock market this is one of the place where demand and supply but the market actually truly the demand and supply really plays its role so price is set by the buyer willing to pay the highest price given that demand and supply then the price is set by the buyer willing to pay the highest price for that stock so 
market price will be set by the buyer who can take advantage of the asset. Superior information about an asset can increase its value by reducing perceived risk. So because we have already seen that uh, stock price it actually reflect uh, even the re your required rate of return that the KE that include not only the return from alternative investment plus you also need a risk premium. So superior information about an asset can increase its value by reducing perceived risk. So information is important for individuals to value each assets. So you, the value of your KE is subject to the information that you are uh, availing, that you are having about a company. When new information is released about a firm, whether it's for a firm is going, going to do well or the financial condition of the firm or the business condition of the firm is bad, then obviously you know that all these going to affect uh, expectation and the prices of the stock. So accordingly, expectation and prices of the stock are going to change. So market participants, um, they constantly receive uh, information and revise their expectations. So stock prices change very frequently. So now let's apply, given this information, let us apply, apply the Gordon formula to calculate what will be the maximum willingness to pay for, for a particular stock by three individual buyers. Suppose the information common to all the three individuals are the expected dividend next year is going to be $2 and expected growth in dividend is going to be 3% that is 0. 0, 3. So in this case, what are the information we need? Because we have the dividend, D1 we have, uh, G we have and we also need information on KE, right? We need information on KE. But KE varies from individual to individual because this is based on their perception about the market and the amount that they are required for them in order to make an investment, which we have already seen uh, the expected return. KE is actually includes the expected return, uh, the, the return that they are going to get from alternative investment plus the risk premium. This actually varies from individual to individual. So let us assume that uh, there are these three individuals with a varying level of uncertainty about D1 and G, about their information because these are all uh, expected, right? Both are expected. So the uncertainty about the D1 and G, suppose individual A, the, he is very highly uncertain about uh, this D1 and G. He expects that may company may not give uh, this two and think that uh, two dividend is not going to give and the growth rate also he expects that it may be even less than that. So in this case, uh, assume that the KE of this individual, individual A is going to be 15 percentage and for the individual B, his medium, his uncertainty level is little bit below, lower than individual A and he needs only 12 percentage and individual C, he is uh, less uncertain, he is confident that this is going to be the what these values are going to be same. That means this, you know that the dividend and the expected growth rate is actually a function of uh, the general business condition that the macroeconomic risk plus the systemic and some of the yeah, firm specific risk as well. So this individual, uh, suppose he is less uncertain, he needs a KE of 10 percentage. So accordingly, if you plug these values into this formula, this formula we know that we are going to get three uh, different prices or the willingness to pay for or the P node, we are going to get three different values for all these three different individuals. So we can see here that what are their willingness to pay for the stock. So if you calculate this one, you can see that the individual A, his willingness to pay, he priced these stocks at a dollar 16.67, individual B is going to give uh, price at 22.2 and individual 3, his willingness to pay is going to be, uh, his valuation, his P, P note for individual C is going to be 28.57. So from this obviously you know that whose K is low, for example in here individual C, his K is low, he is less uncertain, so he is willing to pay high price for this stock, that is going to be $28.57. 
So from this example, you can see that for a uh, suppose in this market there are only these three individuals and they don't know each other and some individual who is holding this stock is willing to sell it. He deliberately looking for uh, selling it. So he's actually what he will be doing that he's desperate the individual who is, who is holding this stock suppose he's desperate that he wants to sell this stock. Then in this case you know that these three individual A, B, C they don't know each other what is their willingness to pay. So individual A he is willing to pay maximum this much and individual B his willingness to pay maximum this much and individual C his willingness to pay is 28.51 that is his maximum willingness to pay. So in this case what is going to be the stock price? So obviously the supplier of stock the seller of the stock want to get the maximum. So uh, this won't be the stock price because this individual A he is willing to pay 22. So this individual A is out of the market. Then when individual B his willingness to pay is maximum 22.22 but individual C is willing to pay 28.57. So assume that there are only three individuals here you know that uh, anyway they are not sharing each other each other's willingness to pay but this person he is willing to pay uh, 28 but since the second person he is my going to pay maximum this much so the stock price is going to be a little bit above this one that means for example 22.23 or maybe we can make it as a round figure or maybe we can just make it to 22.50 suppose but my, my it will be is going to be the price is going to be 22.23 right so because uh, here he is willing to pay max on this one so then then another there is only another individual he so he actually willing to pay maximum this one in between some other individuals comes then obviously the stock price will increase but here since um, uh, his willingness to pay is this much and but uh, second B is this 22.22 so his actually the stock will be sold at a little bit above the stock price of 22.22. Applying this formula uh, suppose um, so most often you see that sometime uh, central bank uh, the governor of uh, RBI or any policy makers they say that sometimes they make an announcement that when the stock prices are uh, low in the market uh, when overall the economy is really uh, doing bad so they sometimes say that uh, they are going to increase the stock price through reducing the rate of interest and how we can explain this one using the Gordon formula and let us take the our Gordon formula here Suppose when RBI lowers interest rate, what is going to happen here? The return on bonds, that means alternative asset to stocks declines, then the investors are willing to accept a lower KE. That means the KE in this case, he is going to accept a low value. So that means if you reduce, suppose this KE value when you keep on reducing, obviously you know that the value of PE is going to increase. This is one mechanism, one pathway. And another thing is that when policymakers, when uh, RBA reduce the low interest, uh, reduce the interest rate, obviously you know that when the interest rate is reduced, uh, the cost of borrowing for the firms reduces. That means uh, the cost of production reduces and uh, then they increase production then it will lead to higher GDP and the growth rate in the economy also increase that means the dividend also dividend of the company also increase because the cost of borrowing reduces declines the that means the profit also increase. So this actually means the G increases when the G increases you can see that again the stock price is going to increase. So when you can see when the KE the, that the KE when the um, this expectation this value KE reduces then stock price increases. Similarly when G increases then the stock price increases. So this, uh, this is the uh, pathway to explain how monetary policy expansion increase the uh, stock prices. Similarly, we can also see that the same formula we can apply during the global financial crisis. You know that during crisis, uh, you know that the G rate it declines, the growth rate declines. And you also know that when the, the, during financial crisis, the, it also led to the economic crisis as well. You, then you know that there is high increased level of uncertainty in the economy. So you need the increase in recurrent return this also increases so because of both that the G is declining K is increasing because of both you know that uh, the stock price is going to decline as per the Gordon formula thank you